these men Won't you show us a spring in the desert where love can flow out Lord, your love is full to the brim Lord, your love's a cup running over Lord, your loving heart is a river that rolls over us And calls us to join in the stream You still run to be a sea Grace in the far country Gardener who won't give up Stones cry out with praise Still we need more than free how we want to stand in amazement Won't you roll back the stone again So love can flow out Lord, your love is full to the brim Lord, your love's a cup running over Lord, your loving heart is a river That rolls over us And calls us to join in Hi, good morning and welcome to worship. I am so glad to have you here today, whether you are worshiping with us for the first time or returning. Please know that your presence here is always welcome and deeply appreciated. Our service for today includes communion, so I invite you to gather now whatever it is you need for communion right where you are, bread, wine, cracker, grape juice, or even water, and to have it with you today. Our service for today continues our full to the brim and expansive Lenten worship. And so today we're going to continue along in Luke's gospel and we're going to hear Jesus tell a very familiar story, which is often in our Bibles called the prodigal son. Now, if you know or if you don't, the word prodigal means like lavish and excessive. And so the story is often entitled, like I said, the prodigal son. But I want you to imagine today that uh, as you hear the story, like I preached on last week, these titles are just made up. And to perhaps imagine the other characters like the father who are prodigal in other things besides just wasting things, but a father who is prodigal in grace and lavish in mercy and excessive in love. And maybe listen to the story from a different perspective and try not to already imagine the ending before you begin, which I know is hard because I do all the time anyway. So Anyway, one more time before we begin, I invite you to gather whatever it is you need for communion in the space you are in today. And please know as well, you are welcome to interact with this worship service, however feels appropriate to you, whether you use any of the emojis if you're on Facebook or you type into the comments on Facebook and YouTube. And so I invite you now as we get ready for worship to join me in taking a deep breath. And welcome, my beloved, to an expansive Lenten worship. Please know as we get ready to begin that you are welcome to interact with this worship service however it is appropriate to you, whether you speak the words out loud uh, with those with whom you are gathered, you say them in your head and in your heart, you pray the prayers or sing the songs. Please know that however you worship at our prodigal grace, full to the brim worship service is okay. And that you are welcome in this place always. Our service for today begins with the gathering. Please join me now in our call to worship. God's reach is endless. God's mercy is unstoppable. God's grace is lavish. God's love is constant. God's wisdom is vast. God's hope is stubborn. God's presence is here. With us, among us, moving through us. Breathe easy, breathe deeply. We are in God's house. So come, let us worship the one who welcomes us home. Please join me now in our prayer of confession. Holy God, you are a God of open arms and hopeful waiting. You are a God of joyful homecomings and porch lights left on. You are a God who does not rest until everyone is safe once again and the lost have been found. And because of who you are, we turn to you now in prayer and confession, trusting that no matter what we do 
or leave undone, no matter where we go or how long it takes to come home, you are waiting for us with your porch light left on. So let us pray together. For the times we forget who and whose we are, forgive us. For the times we try to make it on our own, forgive us. For the times we refuse to join your gracious party, forgive us. For the times we hold on to our resentments and our hurt, forgive us. For the times we try to control your mercy and invitation, Forgive us. For the times we burn the bridges that you build, forgive us. For the times we forget that we belong to one another, forgive us. For the times we refuse to hear you call our names, forgive us. Yes, forgive us, gracious God, and hear us. For the truth is all we really want is to come home. Amen. My beloved, we worship a God who is extravagant in mercy and excessive in grace. We worship a God whose love and welcome is beyond anything we can even begin to imagine. We worship a God who promises us that no matter how many times we run, no matter how far we go or how lost we get, God is waiting for us with the porch light on. The doors are open. This feast is for you. This grace is extravagant. Thanks be to God. And so please take a moment to share God's forgiveness, love, and grace with one another, saying, the peace of Christ be with you always. The peace of Christ be with all of you who are gathered together today across all distances and divides. To the banquet, there's a place for you. Though you maybe have no money, though you maybe feel unworthy in your strength or in your weakness, you are welcome. Come, come to the banquet, there's a place for you. See, you are an honored guest from constant serving. You may rest, so sit you down. Be fed and blessed, for you are welcome. Come, come to the banquet, there's a place for you. Woman, wise one, mother, maiden, see your plate with food is laden, and your place is set and waiting. You are welcome. As we get ready to hear the word, let us pray. God of open doors, we often long to come home to you, to love, and to ourselves, but we aren't always sure how to get there. We know that we need you, but the road back to you is heavy with distractions. So if we can dare to be so forward, 
We pray, reach into the cacophony of our hearts and minds and make yourself known. Quiet everything but your word for us today. Leave us awestruck, drown out the distractions, come as thunder or come as a still small voice. We don't care which. We just pray that you will come. Turn on the light, speak through these words, find the parts of us that are lost. Amen. Our service continues with the word. This reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 16 through 21. Because of this decision, we don't evaluate people from a human point of view. We looked at the Messiah that way once and got it all wrong, as you know. We certainly don't look at him that way anymore. Now we look inside, and what we see is that anyone united with the Messiah gets a fresh start, is created new. The old life is gone, a new life emerges. Look at it. All this comes from the God who reconciled the relationship between us and him, and then called us to reconcile our relationships with each other. God put the world right with himself through the Messiah giving the world a fresh start by offering forgiveness of sins. God has given us the task of telling everyone what he is doing. We're Christ's representatives. God uses us to invite all people to enter into God's work of making things right between them. We're speaking for Christ himself now. Be reconciled to God. How, you ask? In Christ. God put the wrong on him who never did anything wrong so we could be put right with God. Word of God, word of life. Blessed is the soul that's free from the sea. No need to hide what he says from what he means. Is the heart forgiven by love? Whose every fault I could long covers up? Long I disguise and bear. My shame ran through the night and I roam through the day. Shelter I saw where I thought I was safe. No silent soul, how you wasted away. And at last I told all my sins and the shouts of joy. up if you truly want to live do not hide alone in the dark like this one fool did be not like the mule as he fights against the rains come let your broken heart be bound
what doesn't play by the rules. I come into the room calculating what I've done, as if hurt could be measured, as if there was a score system, as if we could say what I owe in return. I come into the room ready to apologize, ready to make amends, ready to tell you all the things I'll do to make it better. But you put your arms around me. Grace is the ocean that softens the edges. Grace is rain in the desert. You're not sure whether to laugh, cry, or dance. Grace is a miracle all by itself. In a score-keeping world, grace doesn't play by the rules. I come into the room calculating what I've done. You say there's grace here. It feels like a miracle. I don't know whether to laugh, cry, or dance. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. By this time, a lot of men and women of questionable reputation were hanging around Jesus, listening intently. The Pharisees and religion scholars were not pleased, not pleased at all. They growled, he takes in sinners and eats meals with them, treating them like old friends. And their grumbling triggered this story. Then he said, there was once a man who had two sons. The younger said to his father, Father, I want right now what's coming to me. So the father divided the property between them. It wasn't long before the younger son packed his bags and left for a distant country. There, undisciplined and dissipated, he wasted everything he had. After he had gone through all his money, there was a bad famine all through that country, and he began to feel it. He signed on with a citizen there who assigned him to his fields to slop the pigs. He was so hungry, he would have eaten the corn cobs in the pig slop, but no one would give him any. That brought him to his senses. He said, all those farmhands working for my father sit down to three meals a day, and here I am, starving to death. I'm going back to my father. I'll say to him, Father, I've sinned against God. I've sinned before you. I am not worthy to be called your son. Take me on as a hired hand. He got right up and went home to his father. When he was still a long way off, his father saw him. His heart filled with compassion. He ran out, embraced him, and kissed him. The son started his speech. Father, I've sinned against God. I've sinned before you. I don't deserve to be called your son ever again. But the father wasn't listening. He was calling to the servants, quick, bring a clean set of clothes and dress him. Put the family ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Then get a prize-winning calf and roast it. We're going to feast. We're going to have a wonderful time. My son is here, given up for dead and now alive, given up for lost and now found. And they began to have a wonderful time. Now all this time, his older son was out in the field. When the day's work was done, he came in. As he approached the house, he heard the music and dancing. Calling over one of the houseboys, he asked, what was going on? He told him, your brother came home. Your father has ordered a feast because he has him home safe and sound. The older brother stomped off in an angry sulk and refused to join in. His father came out and tried to talk to him, but he wouldn't listen. The son said, look, how many years I've stayed here serving you, never giving you one moment of grief. But have you ever thrown a party for me and my friends? Then the son of yours, who has thrown away your money on whores, shows up and you go all out with a feast. His father said, son. You don't understand. You're with me all the time, and everything that is mine is yours. But this, this is a wonderful time, and we had to celebrate. This brother of yours was dead, and he's alive. He was lost, and he's found. This is the gospel of the Lord. Grace and peace to you, my beloved, from the one who welcomes us home always.
Amen. When Silas was about four or five, I'm not sure which exactly, but sometime, not long before our world shut down for what was supposed to be just a couple of weeks, I found myself in the parking lot at Lord of Life, picking him up from preschool. Now pick up, right, for the most part was Paul's job, but on that day, for whatever reason, it was mine. And so a bit before four o'clock, I pulled into the parking lot, parked my car, and headed inside. And everything seemed like it always did that day. Absolutely normal, organized chaos. And as I picked up Silas's daily paper that let me know once again he had not even attempted to nap that day while the rest of his friends had, and then gave Silas a big hug as he pulled me towards whatever he had been working on moments before I arrived, I smiled because things were exactly as they were supposed to be. And so after picking up all of Silas's stuff from his cubby and listening to his endless chatter, we headed towards the front door. And that's when I noticed that there were a bunch of people standing right outside the door. The director, the assistant director, the receptionist, and a mom I had talked to a few times before. Her daughter, who was a year older than Silas, had just started kindergarten that year. Now, normally this mom's daughter would ride the bus from Lord of Life to school and back every single day. And if I happened to be picking Silas up, I would always see this mom standing out front of the building, excitedly waving as her daughter got off the bus. But this afternoon was different. The girl's mom was standing beside the bus, crying. And I could hear, as I got closer, the assistant director saying to her over and over again, don't worry, we'll find her. Don't worry, we'll find her. She won't be lost for long. Shaking, I watched as the mom sat down on the bench in front of the school, looking just as lost as her daughter, silent tears just streaming down her face. And as everyone around her scrambled to get organized, to make phone calls, to figure out what had happened, she just sat there as if the whole world had paused around her. Mama, Silas said, why is she crying? because her daughter is lost. I said she wasn't on the bus. Mama, Silas said, grabbing my hand even harder. It's okay. I told him, not really believing it as I said it. It's going to be okay. I promise. And as I watched this mother surrounded by this crowd of people and yet somehow still absolutely alone, I grab Silas's hand even harder because although her daughter was not mine, although my kids stood right beside me in the doorway, I could feel this mother's fear, her terror coursing through my own body. I could feel her anguish, her thousands of questions, her wondering if she could have done something different. I could feel her aloneness her heartbreak, that sick to her stomach feeling that comes when the world you have trusted to be a certain way suddenly breaks into a million different little pieces. And while part of me in that moment wanted to run to her, to wrap my arms around her and weep there on that bench beside her, the truth is, the other part of me, the vulnerable, the scared, the parent part of me, just wanted to pick up Silas in my arms and run the other way. Protect him. Keep him safe from all these things in this world that I knew that I couldn't. Now, before I get much further, here's the spoiler alert. 
The girl was found quickly after this moment and reunited with her mother. She was five, right? And had gotten on the wrong bus. And although it doesn't happen, sometimes it does, especially in those early days of kindergarten. But regardless, that moment there in the parking lot, that soul crushing moment, of watching another mother lose a child and imagining how easy it would be to lose mine has stayed with me all these years later. And it still manages to break my heart when I remember it. It still manages to make me hold my breath some days while I wait in the school pickup line for Silas until I see him running out the door. Because the truth is, to have a child, biologically yours or not, the truth is to have anyone for that matter who is dependent on you alone is to be vulnerable. Yes, to have someone like that is to be ready to have your heart broken in an instant in the way nothing else in this world can. Which is why, when I hear this story this time around, it isn't the boys and both their stupidity who capture my attention because, let's face it, both these boys do not really get it. No, it isn't the boys who capture my attention, but the father. The father who runs down the road in a very undignified manner with his robes flying out around him. It's the father who throws a party without even waiting for the youngest son to repent for his wrongdoings. It's the father who gives away everything he has to both his sons without hesitation or waiting for anything in return. It's the father who invites the oldest to let go of his jealousy and resentment and anger and to actually experience what a life of joy is really like. Yes, it is the father who tells his oldest son that the boundaries he puts up on what makes something good or someone good or bad are self-imposed. Yes, it is this father whose generosity and grace and love that is so reckless, so extravagant, so wasteful, that takes my breath away, that captures my attention. Yes, it's this father and his vulnerability that I absolutely love. The way he gives his children so much freedom, knowing that in an instant they could hurt him. The way he discards both his dignity and his some tit-for-tat moral co code for the foolishness of grace. The way he's willing to give up everything he has to give another chance to let in a little joy. The way he knows that his children will mess up again even after this story is over. But still, he will willingly pours out mercy like water and calls them his beloved. Yes, it's this father and his prodigal, extravagant, wasteful grace and vulnerability that I love. It's this father that gives me hope. Because you see, it's this father that reminds me that even when I royally mess up, even when I get lost and cannot find my way home, even when I waste what I have first been given, even when I feel entitled and jealous, even when I do all the things right so that I can name what someone else has done wrong, even when I let my anger stop me from being who I am called to be, that God, our God, God the mother, God the father, God the prodigal parent, will still be gracious and kind and merciful and vulnerable and loving to me. God, our God, will still weep over me, will still search for me when I'm lost, 
will still invite me to the party when I am angry, will still welcome me home when I come back, will still trust me with everything in this world without hesitation, will still call me by my right name, beloved, over and over and over again. Yes, this God, our God, who risks everything by calling us their children, who is vulnerable with us even when we think we do not deserve it, who is ready to have their hearts broken by us in an instant, who will run down the road to meet me saying that everything is mine already. Yes, this God, our God, is the God who takes my breath away who gives me hope, who reminds me, reminds us, my beloved, that no matter what, no matter how lost or found we may be, that nothing, nothing, absolutely nothing, will be able to separate us from the heart of the one who loves us and this whole world with extravagant, prodigal, excessive, wasteful grace. Thanks be to God. Amen. I'm coming home. I'm coming home. Tell the world I'm coming home. Let the rain wash away all the pain of yesterday. I know my kingdom awaits and they've forgiven my mistakes i'm coming home i'm coming home tell the world i'm coming
kingdom awaits and they've forgiven my mistakes i'm coming home i'm coming home tell the world i'm coming our service for today continues with the prayers of the people and please know that as always you are welcome to type any prayer requests that you have into the comments, knowing that they will be held by me and by the community this week. And so let us pray. Trusting in God's grace and promise to hear us, we offer these prayers for the church, the world, and all who are in need. For the church, for mercy and welcome, for a spirit of hospitality and forgiveness for creation, for farmers and farm workers, for healing for the earth. For the nations of this world, for their leaders, for all those in places of war and conflict. For those in distress, for divisions, for those suffering, for the promise to make everything new. for those who are lost and wandering, for runaways, for those who do not have a safe place to call home, for our prayers. For those who have died, for those who mourn, for the promise of your heavenly banquet. To you, O God of mercy and grace, we entrust all for whom we pray. Amen. Our service continues with the meal. God feeds us with the presence of Jesus Christ. Jesus has always been one to invite. So my beloved, you are invited to this table, each and every one of us with our doubts, our fears, our scars, our joys, our hopes, our dreams, our questions. We are invited to God's table and here we will be met, here we will be fed, here we are given a taste of expansive life that is full to the brim with love, overflowing with joy. So come, not because you must, but because you can come. You and all that you have to give and all that you are are invited to this table. It is for you. God who knows us, we are amazed by you, by your love, by your hope, by your joy, by your abundance, by your peace, by your spirit. So pour out a double portion of yourself and your spirit onto our bread and cup so that we might catch a glimpse of your goodness. For among friends gathered round a table, Jesus took bread and broke it and said, this is my body broken for you. Later, he took a cup of wine and said, this is the new relationship with God made possible because of my death. Take it all of you to remember me. Amen. And so trusting in you alone, we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So taste and see that the Lord is good. This is the body of Christ given for you. And this is the blood of Christ shed for you. This bowl of Christ shed for you. Amen. And so may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. The service concludes with ascending. One by one the enemy has whispered lies and
that you are God, yours is the victory. And we know there is more to come that we may not yet see. So with the faith you've given us, we'll step into the valley unafraid. So a blessing for all of you. As you leave this place, may you go trusting that God who waits for us, who leaves the porch light on for us, who doesn't stop looking for us when we get lost, who throws a feast for us when we are found, is a God of prodigal, excessive, extravagant, over-the-top grace for us and for the world. And as you leave this place, may you be awestruck by the beauty of this world. May you laugh and may it be contagious. May you overflow with love for those around you. May you be effusive with hope and quick to point out joy. And in all of your living and breathing and being, may you find yourself full to the brim with God's Holy Spirit. And may it change your life. In the name of the lover, the beloved, and love itself, go in peace, full to the brim. Amen. Thank you so much for worshiping with us this week, and I cannot wait to worship with all of you again soon.